Tuesday is offense day. Kenton and I will be breaking down what to expect on the offensive side of the ball Thursday night in stores. You are locked on Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to another episode of Locked on Wolfpack, free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's title sponsor is FanDuel, uh, the official sports book of Locked on. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 back in bonus bets guaranteed. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked on to get started. As always, I'm Grayson Boone. Joining me is Kenton Gibbs, and Kenton, Tuesday is offense day. We're going to be talking about what to expect from UConn's offense and also NC State's offense. We're going to start with the home team on Thursday night. It will be the UConn Huskies. Of course, mentioned this a little bit in yesterday's episode. We saw UConn last year in 2022, and to be honest with you, we handed it to them. We sent them packing on their way. It was a relatively painless loss for nc state took care of business early and put on the cruise control uh basically in the second the entire second half but we are expecting a bit closer game this year we're expecting more of an offensive effort i guess you could say from uconn and to start here i'm going to start with their quarterback situation um this news broke for uconn i believe it was like four or five days ago where they announced their qb1 and Something I've noticed amongst UConn football followers, it was a bit of a surprise. And UConn is going with senior transfer from Maine. His name is Joe Fagnano. He will be their starting quarterback. Now, interesting storyline here. UConn's offensive coordinator, Nick Charlton, was the head coach at Maine, now at UConn. So uh, it's interesting. UConn has a little bit of a Brennan Armstrong, Robert and I situation. Now, Kenton, you mentioned as soon as we got on here before we hit record, you said, wait a minute, what happened to Zion Turner? I was like, well, he's QB3. And then you said, wait, Taquan Roberson's not going to start? I said, nope, that's QB2. And I think this is where most of the surprise was coming from UConn fans. And I saw a range of emotions from what are we doing to in Coach Mora I trust into, well, I hope, maybe he's on a quick leash because we think that Roberson's the better quarterback. I don't know. But Kenton, what of your what are your expectations from their senior transfer quarterback, Joe Fagnano? Oh, I hate to say this. If he throws for um if he throws for over 250 yards, uh if I was Coach Gibson, this defense would roll till everybody throws up. <laughs> I'm not joking. I mean, 251 yards on the nose. All right, guys, everybody get down on the line and roll from this end zone to that one till I get tired of watching it with all due respect. Um, I don't see it. I don't. I, I thought, hey, with the two quarterbacks they got back there, they both of these guys very capable in every aspect of the game. The two that they saw, we saw Zion Turner and we saw him lead the team to many wins. We saw Robeson and there's a reason he was the starter to begin with last year. And so there's a reason for that. And I'm looking at this new guy and I'm saying to myself, brother, you didn't dominate at Maine. You didn't look like a dude, at least with Virginia and Tony Musket. Tony Musket was a dude at Monmouth. He was like, I want to say like the conference uh, freshman of the year or something or, or player, been, yeah. something like that. He was a dude. This was just a guy off the street, more, more or less. No disrespect. No. Uh, yes, he's a, a uh, actual football player, yes. But this isn't the guy that I'm like, oof, the, hey, the ACC need to be – or not – what conference are they in? They're not in the American, are they? Are they independent? 
something I figured out today looking through their schedule. They're independent. They, play, right? they are independent. Yeah, they are cool. actually one of four or five schools in the country that does not play in a conference for football. I did not know that until today. Yeah, so I, I'm looking at them and I'm saying to myself, this isn't the game, this isn't the team where uh, you know everybody's gonna be looking around the conference saying, Hey man, that's like not oh god, it's oh boy, it's a bad boy coming down the pipe. So I, I think the charge for NC State stop the run and have some fun. I think that's the charge. This this team is one that the, the best thing that they do is run the ball. They're loaded up front in terms of um, all of their – every lineman that they have except one from last year coming back. That's where this game is going to be won, in the trenches, because I highly doubt, highly – there are few things that I'm sure of in life, and I'm, you know, I'm not aware of too many things, but I know what I know if you know what I mean. And I know that if, if they end up throwing for big yardage in this game, like I said, we wouldn't even touch a ball next week in practice. We wouldn't even touch a ball. We would, hey, I know we, coach, should we be getting ready for Sam Hartman? No, no, because if we couldn't stop Fagnano, there's nothing we can do now to stop Hartman. Get down on the line. Let's just roll it. Yeah. If, if you needed a benchmark to work off of, and again, stats don't translate from one year to the next, but UConn, when we played them last year in Raleigh, they threw for a grand total. Of 39 yards. That is it. That's not a typo. 39 yards. Now, I'm expecting them to be a bit more explosive through the air this year. I think Zion Turner is kind of just thrust into a role um, after Roberson went down with the ACL tear in game one. But undeniably, UConn's strength here is going to be their run game. And Kenton, you mentioned it. Four of their five starting offensive linemen return. One of them is an All-American. So, it's really no secret what their strengths and potential weaknesses here uh, in, pertaining to their offense. Now, again, I think two things are true of Joe Fagnano here, their quarterback. One, he's probably not going to be afraid. He's going to come out and try and sling it. He's going to compete. Um, and you're going to see a bit more offensive pressure from UConn than you saw last year. Uh, here's the other thing that I also think is true. Joe Fagnano has never seen a defense and or a secondary like NC State. Yeah. And we're going to come out and we're going to be ready for it. D despite their crowd, I know they're trying to sell out their stadium. Uh, funny enough, their the nickname for their stadium is called The Rent, and they're saying pack the rent. I don't know if that's directly a pun for us or if they just want folks in there, but you got to mm. imagine NC State fans are going to take that over because there will be a lot of pack at the rent anyway um it's it's simply respectfully it's not going to matter our defense is way too good way too good to yield any you know explosive plays massive chunks of yardage and any if at all a high amount of points i expect uconn to score maybe around like 10 points 10 to 13 points um and to be honest with you i think it just might be a little bit of rust for our defense in game one, because I think if we got UConn in like game seven, you could be looking at a donut. That's, that's how confident I am in the defense and how I guess unimpressed I am with the UConn offense. But, you know, like I mentioned here, they do have a, a solid returning offensive line here, four out of five guys. They're going to try and run the ball. And yeah. one of our strengths in our defense is run defense. So best of luck with that respectfully. Um, you know, and when it does come to slinging the ball around the yard, I think we have one of the better secondaries in the ACC as well. So probably overly confident, confident in our defense in game one at UConn, but we're going to have to see how that shakes out. Uh, yeah. In just a minute, we're going to touch on the Wolfpack offense, our expectations for game one. But first, a word from our sponsors. Today's sponsor is BetterHelp. If you've ever felt like a time where you're unsure in life, you had tough choices to make the path forward was not always clear. Whether you're dealing with decisions around your career, relationships, or anything else, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire 
and get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnCollege today to get 10% off your first month. That's H-E-L-P, BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnCollege. All right, and before we get into the Wolfpack offense, I want to mention college football season is here, and this season, Locked On is kicking up our coverage. Each Friday, Locked On will go live from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern on every single Locked On College YouTube channel. Locked On College Football Live will cover college football playoff implications, the conference rivalry games, and go in-depth like only Locked On can, including insight and analysis from our stable of Locked On College hosts, including us, covering their team every day. Find Locked On College Football Live every Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on any Locked On College YouTube channel. You won't want to miss it. Now, getting into the Wolfpack offense, Kenton, I'm going to let you have the floor first. Game one up in UConn, what are the most important pieces of this offense that you're looking forward to seeing? Um, I'm looking at the big boys first and foremost. I know that with what I've been hearing, I don't really have too many doubts about our receiver room anymore. Um, I'm looking at the big fellas because I think that our backfield is one that is not a temperature raiser or temperature dropper. They're, they're not a, we don't have a, a uh, thermometer backfield. We have a thermostat backfield, you know what I mean? Or actually we don't have a thermostat backfield. We have a thermometer backfield. They'll tell you what the temperature is. The offensive line has to set a temperature of dominance that I think our running backs can feed off of and grow into, and, and then they can get rolling and maybe match that thermostat energy of like, hey, we'll we'll affect the game and change it positively once they build up some confidence. But I think that it's it's a, a key. How can we run the ball? How can we? Let's just be honest. We all love a gunslinger. We all know that Brendan Armstrong is that. Gunslingers are at their best when you're looking at heavy boxes. When you're looking at, oh man, we know that the night wants to throw the ball, but they're averaging six a pop on the ground. We got to bring somebody else down. So, you know, the, I think that that's, that's the big thing I'm looking at, uh, particularly the, the middle of the uh, offensive line, because on the outside, we have two players that are either extremely experienced or extremely promising. You've got Belton, who everybody says, hey, he's got the tools to be a potential first or second round pick next year. You've got, uh, I believe it's McKay at the uh, other tackle. Yeah, McKay. Who, yeah, who's done this. McKay's been there for forever. He's he's I'm not as long as Tyrone Riley was. I, I he was no no kidding. Tyrone Riley was there literally when I played. So that's that's how long uh, Tyrone Riley was there. But you got McKay out there who's played a lot of ball as well. You know I'm not really worried about them. That center through guard, both guards. That's what I'm looking at because you're you have a lot of change there from last year. You have Dylan McMahon sliding inside. You have new guys at guard uh based upon some injury situations that we've had happen. And so what what is what do we look like? Are we able to uh make the inside running game pliable to our will? Yeah, my my answer here it's a little bit vanilla, but just follow along with me here. My two biggest things here, I I guess Mostly O-line, but probably wide receiver and running back position as well. It's one, meaningful reps. And now I mean this with all due respect to UConn, but we need to be using this game to get those that meaningful in-game experience. It's the first game of the year. All they've had is practice against our own team. They're probably chomping at the bit to be able to face somebody wearing different colors here. I want to see that taken with the utmost seriousness. No mental... Mental penalties, can't afford those in any game, let alone the first one of the year. But just being crisp, being disciplined, and executing their situations, okay? And secondly, healthy. Be healthy. Stay healthy. The rest of the season is going to depend on how healthy we are from week to week. And again, I'm not looking a, a week ahead. I'm not worried about Notre Dame right now. I'm worried about UConn. But if you get banged up against UConn, you're probably going to have a bad day against uh, Notre Dame in week two. So it's very important we stay healthy. It's very important we stay disciplined. And then kind of the overarching sentiment here is 
I want to see all the things. We've been hearing yeah. about this offense for two months now, throughout the summer, some of the spring. I want to see it. I want to see yeah. it in action. I want to see Brennan go to work. I want to see what these wide receivers have been doing uh, you know, over the summer into the fall. I would like to see an establishment of a run game early. And, of course, that goes hand-in-hand hand with the offensive line. I want to see them put in the work. And, you know, maybe there are some concerns about the uh, the thinness of perhaps the left side of the line. I don't think it'll pose much of an issue against UConn. But that still needs to be taken seriously. Every rep in this UConn game is going to be valuable, not just because it's the first game of the year, but every game moving forward. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like you said, you know, anybody who knows me, who's watched me do uh, Ken's Keys and all that, you've heard me say, don't play with your food, put it away early because you don't want to have a situation where your starters are, are, you know, having to play four quarters of football instead of two and a half because you you did what you were supposed to do against a team that objectively just doesn't doesn't really have it. And I, I want to talk about something that's very interesting here from, you know, main football. OK. You would think with the numbers that uh, Joe Fagnano put up, hey, this is a this is a situation where man, they probably didn't have much going in the running game, and they they probably didn't really do too much that could uh, impact them positively. Their second leading rusher on that team was averaging nine point five yards per carry. Their first leading rusher four point seven. With all due respect, I don't think that people were dropping back with uh, seven or eight in coverage and saying, hey, we're not worried about the run here. And yet Fagnano still couldn't do much with that. I'm telling you right now, if NC State plays around and lollygags around and, you know, does all the thing, listen, this should be a game that we put away without having to get deep in our play calling bag. This should be a game that we we put away uh, fairly easily. And, you know, this is a... Connecticut team is a UConn team that's gotten better and better and better as, as last season went on. You need to show early, hey, you're good. We're better. Y'all got better at the end of last season. You didn't get 31 points better from last year. We'll, we'll take care of it. We'll, we'll show you how this thing goes. So, you know, like you said, get guys rested, have guys off the field, have guys off their feet, and ready to go for Notre Dame next week. But don't look ahead. Look to beating the the dog, you know, the mess out of this team. I almost lost our clean right in there. And then go forward and, and look at uh, Notre Dame and all that. Yeah, of course, more important than anything we just said is win the game. You yeah. cannot fall asleep. Yeah. Again, like we mentioned yesterday, UConn's going to show up. Their crowd is going to show up. Their team is looking to build momentum off of the, the bowl season they had just last year. It's the best season they've had in – what, six, seven years? There's some excitement around this program. Yep. And the, the energy will be there on Thursday night. So if we fall asleep, if we're still on the bus in the second quarter, we could find ourselves in a tough spot heading into the second half. And I kind of want to make note of uh, one of our YouTube comments that came in today on Monday. Um, basically said, you know, th the dream scenario is that we play so well in the first half that we're able to get a lot of valuable reps to our depth guys. Maybe you see an MJ Morris for a couple series out there, or, you know, you see the twos and wide receiving running back offensive line, whatever it may be. That is the ideal scenario. You want to be able to comfortably jump out to that lead, trust your defense to then hold that lead and get as many valuable reps to everyone else as you possibly can, because we saw how important it is to get those reps when you go through four different quarterbacks and you endure the injuries that we've been dealt with these last couple of years, every rep matters for these depth guys. They got to be able to answer the bell when it is rung. So absolutely, it's, it's so important that NC state gets off the bus and they punch UConn right in the mouth and they don't stop punching until submission. UConn needs to know that NC state is leagues above where UConn is again respectfully or disrespectfully fine we're, just, <laughs> we're we're a better football team and that needs yeah. to be known from the from the opening kick on Absolutely. thursday night i thought we should agree again we you can't play around you can't wait around and say oh well you know we we think that we're better than this team so we'll kind of lollygag our way through it and we'll we'll kind of wake up 
what we don't want to happen is what happened last year at ECU. Yes. Like, let's just be very honest about what happened. We were ECU Super Bowl. We showed up and, oh, we'll, we'll figure it out. I said, right. And what happened? It took an act of God to win yeah. that game for it us. It did. It did. You don't want that for, for this team. And granted, this team ain't that. Yeah, that was a team that was bringing back one of their all-time passing leaders and all that good stuff. They were bringing back uh, multiple guys who that, – that running back that they had was something special. I, I yeah. remember thinking before – I remember thinking before the game, we do not need our linebackers in one-on-one matchups with him. Nope. And and you know, uh, sure, sure as uh, Dudu stinks, what happens? We end up Isaiah Moore with him one-on-one. He runs an option route and makes Isaiah Moore look like he's running in mud. You know, we this is not this team is not that team, but they can still do those types of things if we walk into it with that. Uh, you know, we should just kind of figure it out. Mm-mm. No, be ready. Be ready to rock from snap one, and you'll get the job done. You fall asleep at the wheel again, the football gods do not take kindly to you asking for them for multiple acts in back-to-back years against teams you're better than. Right, and, and something I mentioned just yesterday. Now, I don't think we're technically UConn Super Bowl, but we are one of their biggest home games of the year. And so, like I mentioned, they're going to show up. They're doing their pack-the-rent campaign. They're going to try and bring, bring out – one of their biggest crowds they've had in years. So we got a front row seat to what happens if you fall asleep there in the second half. I would much prefer we don't have to go through that again, especially not week one on the road uh, when we have so much ahead of us. So that's kind of what to expect on the offensive sides of the ball for both teams. Uh, We're going to kick it to our second sponsor of today. That is FanDuel. Get ready for the NFL season with incredible offers from FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get $200 back in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off of NFL Sunday ticket. Yes, you heard me correctly. You get $100 off of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can be on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit fanduel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. All right. And last note here on a Tuesday, I saw that Davin Van was awarded the number one jersey of 2023. Of course, this has become a, a Dave Doran tradition during his tenure here that the the player wearing number one exhibits you know so much hard work in the off season uh i believe doran said uh actually it's on here on the quote says he has one speed he's a dominant player who serves other others off the field um here's the note i was looking for doran says the number one jersey is given to a player who exhibits an elite work ethic practice and training habits while also leading his teammates davin van earning this is I mean, what more could you ask for? You know, we talk about how important the defensive line is going to be for this year. In addition to Davin Van getting one of these honorable jerseys in the number one, Savion Jackson wears the number nine, which is another honorable jersey. He got permission from Bradley Chubb and then Mario Williams, who is preceding Chubb there. You have two guys with honorable numbers being worn, and both of them are on the defensive line. You talk about the importance and the potential star power you have there up front, incredible. But Davin Van, certainly deserving of the number one jersey. You know, just a quick refresher of the past number ones here in Doran's tenure. 2020 to 2022, we had Isaiah Moore. 2019, we had James Smith-Williams. 2018, wide receiver Stephen Lewis. 16 and 17 was Jalen Samuels. And 2015 was safety Hakeem Jones. So, Davin Van is uh, kind of joining elite territory here in Wolfpack lore. So congratulations to Davin. Looking forward to an excellent season. Absolutely. Um, you know, Davin Van was one of those guys that I bought stock in early. And uh, I was telling folks all offseason, hey, there's a guy to look out for. I, I'm, I'm, people think I'm lying when I say I keep my ear to the streets. But let me tell you, the pavement talks to me, baby. We, we have great conversations. And I'm trying to tell you, this is a young man that you can expect a lot from. 
Uh, this is a young man that you can expect, you know, health, health withstanding. This is a young man that you can expect to be special this year, to see some things that, um, you know, there's, I've, I've talked a lot about how um, stats don't always tell the story with D linemen. Sometimes you got to watch the games to understand their impact. And the thing with Davin Van is he's kind of a mix of both because he does have that. You watch the game and you see how he's collapsing pockets and impacting things. But also there's going to be times where you look at the stat sheet from a game. And you're just like, man, this guy was everywhere. And so um, I'm looking forward to seeing more of that this season. And, and you know, that's that's what you that is the ideal uh, thing that you're hoping for in the three, three, five, a defensive lineman that is all over the place. That is always going to be, they're going to hold down their gap and where they have to be, but they're also going to take it a step beyond that and say, Hey, I know that I know where I'm supposed to be. I'm going to be there, but then I'm going to take it upon myself to after I have container, after I have secure wherever I'm supposed to be. All right, now let's go make a play. Let's go be something special. Let's go change the math because that's what football is all about. It's about math and numbers. It's about uh, offensively, you're trying to influence players so that your math equals one on zero and you found somebody wide open in a, a hole or zone in coverage. And defensively, you want multiple guys to the ball. You want multiple guys wherever they, the offense wants to throw the ball. You want multiple guys in that window or in that passing lane and so on and so forth. So he's a math changer. He's a guy that you need to double a lot and all that good stuff because, like I said, he can give you speed. He can collapse the pocket. By the way, there was a uh, huge play of Corey Durden playing for my Lions, collapsing the pocket this last week. I hope he makes the, the team. But with that being said, Devin Van's got a little bit of it all. He deserves number one. Absolutely. So looking forward to a, a monster season from Devin Van, in, in addition to being named a captain uh, of this 2023 squad as well. So certainly well-deserved. But that will do it for us here on Tuesday. As always, thanks for hanging out with us. Uh, be sure to drop a like, drop some comments down there so we can get to those on Friday. Let us know what you think of what to expect from UConn's offense, what to expect from NC State's offense, and maybe even some congratulations to Devin Van for being named number one. But let us know what y'all think. And as always, mash that subscribe button on our climb up to 600. There's still time to hit 600 before kickoff. We said that yeah. was one of our goals. So yeah. be sure to tell a friend to tell a friend to then tell their friends to hit that subscribe button and we will see you all tomorrow on wednesday go pack go pack